Burn all your hopes and dreams of a good season into dragon fire and kill off your characters you love in falling debris because we have the writing equivalent of the Hindenburg. It burst into flames. It burst into flames and it's falling. It's crashing. Hey guys, uh... I'm not really sure how to begin this episode. I've been a diehard Game of Thrones fan since day one, and even after the last few weeks of other YouTube commentary channels shitting on the series, saying it's dead, I didn't want to believe it. Did I think the writing was getting worse? Yes, but enough for me to stop enjoying it? No. But tonight's episode changed all of that. I can no longer sit idly by as the writers of the show completely destroy eight seasons of character and plot with decisions that are so out of the realm of possibility that it makes me question what they were thinking. So before you go ahead and dislike this video, I want you to hear my side and join me as we break down this episode and point out some of the flaws that I think hindered this from being one of the greatest series of all time. And please, leave your comments below, I'll be reading them, tell me how wrong I am, but know that my complaints are coming from a place of absolute love for this show. Love and anger. The episode begins with Varys writing a treasonous note revealing that Jon Snow is the true heir to the Iron Throne. We already know Varys is always playing the Game of Thrones, and when Jon lands in Dragonstone, he makes his intentions clear. He wants the right ruler on the throne, aka Jon, but Jon is still loyal to Danny. Danny is moping because she knows Jon has betrayed her. She made Jon swear that he hold the secret about his true lineage, but he told Sansa, who in turn told Tyrion. Now the secret is out of the bag and she isn't dealing too well with it. This is the end of Danny, The woman we've seen struggle so long for seasons to get to the Iron Throne is turning mad just like her father before her. I'm willing to forgive this but it seems achingly unsatisfactory that we've been with her for so long just to have her submit to the same fate of her father. Even season after season she's told us she's not like her father and that we shouldn't be held accountable for the sins of our father. Varys is killed as a traitor, stating that he hopes in the end he's wrong. But with the way Danny acts this episode, it looks like Varys' death is a tragic loss, especially for someone who has claimed he's always supported the best interest of the realm. And perhaps he was right. Danny confronts Jon, claiming that Sansa is just as much at fault for Varys' death than she is. She even threatens him, stating that now Sansa will know what happens when people know the truth. And this is somehow supposed to make things romantic? John has literally been by your side every step of the way, and you can't sit down as civil human beings and work this out? He doesn't even want the throne. He loves you, and yet she's still on the defensive. Tyrion makes a plea to Daenerys that she doesn't use her dragon to burn the civilians within King's Landing. But Danny has gone full Mad King and completely gone against everything her character has stood for for almost eight seasons. Danny has always been about the poor, slaves, and the downtrodden, but now she doesn't give a shit. A dead dragon in Missande, I guess, is the price it takes for the Queen of Westeros to sacrifice thousands of innocents. I used to love Danny and root for her, now I hate her without even understanding where she she's coming from, because that place where she's coming from seems so disingenuous to the character we've grown to love over the last eight seasons. The writing has gone so fast that it comes across as rushed and forced. To make it even worse, she now threatens Tyrion, telling him if he screws up again, it will be his last time. You might as well have a giant sign here that reads, Daenerys will die next episode. And what's the fun in that? We then get the scene where Arya, the person who has killed the Night King, tells the soldier she's going to kill Queen Cersei, but it's so pointless. First of all, why does this scene even exist? Second of all, we've spent seasons seeing how Arya is the perfect assassin, even being able to infiltrate the Freys and kill their entire house. How come she can't do the same thing and get into King's Landing? The Unsullied don't seem to know that Tyrion is the prisoner Jaime's brother, and he's able to free him really easily, just like how Jaime freed Tyrion in Season 4. No problem at all. And Tyrion's plan is so far-fetched. Have Jaime escape with the Queen in a dinghy, past a fleet of ships unnoticed. But the worst of all is he'd be letting his sister go, the sister who he hates with all his soul, who he knows is truly an evil person. Because the Queen of the Seven Kingdoms and a one-handed Jaime Land 
Lannister can just, you know, start a new life without anyone noticing. This also goes entirely against Tyrion's character, who in Season 4 wished he could watch Cersei swallow poison and die in front of him. Tyrion and Jaime hug in what could be their final scene together. The Golden Company prepare for battle while the Hound and Arya make their way into the inner ramparts of King's Landing. Now here is where things start to get unbelievably bad. Danny decides to take on a fleet almost ten times as big as the one that took down Rhaegal last episode, all by herself. Each one of these ships and the ballistae on the shoreline are armed with the same dragon-piercing arrows. It's like flying into a death trap and shows us she learned nothing from her past mistakes. But somehow all 100 of these ships can't hit the dragon when last episode just a few of them could multiple times. Meanwhile, at the front gates, Harry Strickland, the leader of the Golden Company, is one-shotted by an arrow in the back. We never get to see him fight, and his men are completely obliterated by Drogon. What was the point of this character? What was the point of the Golden Company? This is just another example of a character who is built up, but there's absolutely no payoff. This brings me to one of my main criticisms of this episode. The battle is completely one-sided. At least in The Lord of the Rings, The Battle of Helm's Deep, we watch our heroes fight an almost insurmountable foe as the situation gets more dire, with small victories giving us glimpses of hope sprinkled here and there. Here it's just Drogon killing the shit out of everything, and that's it. There's almost no tension, because the battle is so one-sided. The Golden Company is wiped out almost instantly, and the Lannisters surrender. Where is the battle we were promised for eight seasons? It's not in this episode. The Lannister army completely surrenders, and the bells are rung, which tears told John means the Queen has surrendered. And what does Danny do? She literally has the entire city in her grasp. She goes full Targaryen and burns the shit out of everything. It's like watching eight seasons of a character you love in the span of two episodes turn into Jack Torrance from The Shining. Here's Johnny! I'm not saying she can't go full Mad Queen, I'm saying it needs to be earned. And that takes proper time and development, which only a few episodes can't do. I mean, for God's sakes, everyone has surrendered and she's just needlessly killing hundreds of civilians. This causes Grey Worm to attack all those soldiers who surrendered. I used to like Grey Worm, but now his actions make him so unlikable. His whole arc of showing how an Unsullied can learn to love is gone to shit. That arc took seasons to build, but only one episode to destroy. And can we talk about this scene where John saves a woman who's about to be raped? What was the point of this? It serves no point to the plot at all. We already know Danny's army are the the villains here, killing needlessly. We already know John is a good guy and will protect the innocent. It just seems so cliche, contrived, and unwarranted. Euron and Jamie conveniently meet along the shores, where instead of banding together to save the queen, both of whom think she has their child, decide to battle it out. And I don't know, there's just something so unsatisfactory of Jamie getting stabbed by Euron twice. And Euron seems cool with dying since, I guess, he's the one who killed Jamie Lannister. But we all know he just dies to bricks. Cool, I guess. Clegane gives a speech to Arya about revenge, something he's been wanting all his life, and she just changes her mind right then and there. Like one little speech made her change her mind about getting to Cersei, even though she's been wanting her dead since season one. Oh, and can we also talk about the deus ex machina rubble, which manages to kill almost all of Cersei's guards, allowing Clegane to get to her? But there's one cool thing that does happen. The mountain just chucks Kyburn into the wall. That was pretty cool. I'll give him that. Jamie manages to make her way to Cersei, even though he was mortally stabbed twice. And this whole Jamie cersei thing is one of the biggest disappointments of this series. For the past eight seasons, we've seen Jamie slowly drift away from Cersei and become a changed man. Yet in this moment, his love for her trumps all the terrible shit she's done to him in the past. Eight years of character change for Jamie has literally meant nothing. He still sides by her regardless of everything that has happened. He left Brienne for this, people. We then get about five minutes of Arya just running through the crowded destruction of King's Landing, which looks great, but offers no real service to the plot. We don't learn anything new about Arya here, nor are given any new insight to how the battle is unfolding. This is the woman who killed the Night King, and she is subjected to a few scenes of running with civilians through the streets. Clegane ultimately kills the mountain by tackling him through the side of the tower into a fiery pit below. Having both of them die was a bit of a cop-out to me. I would have liked to have seen the mountain die in a fire, just like how the mountain burned Clegane's face as a child, not both of them fly into a fiery pit, 
but that's just me. There was just something that left me wanting from Clegane Bowl. And can we also discuss how John was like completely useless this episode and just like willy nilly was through the streets of King's Landing where he could have gotten killed by Danny and Drogon? Like, does she not know how she could be potentially killing him too? And at this point, winning King's Landing looks like it's the equivalent of winning Hiroshima. It's just a complete mess of destruction, making me question what the point of this was anyway. Is the Iron Throne still even there, or has it been burnt to a crisp? Then we have this mother daughter who we've been watching this whole episode who simply get burnt to a crisp. I'm not exactly sure what their point was, maybe to show the inhumanity of war, which we kind of already get by the hundreds of burning corpses, but hey, whatever. Arya survives. Jamie brings Cersei to the bottom of the Red Keep, only to find their exit blocked by debris. Yes, debris strikes again, and Cersei tells Jamie she doesn't want to die like this. You're telling me we spent eight years, and the last shot we get of them is with a bunch of bricks falling on them? Yep, uh, no redemption, no catharsis, just some full-on brick action. Eight years of nothing. And for Arya, it looks like winter has come, except instead of snow, it's the ash of a burning city. Arya killed the Night King to prevent such horrors from happening, but it looks like humanity can be just as destructive. We also get this scene of Arya in what appears to be Harry Strickland's white horse. Really, the whole purpose of this scene is to get her out of King's Landing, but with all the set design here, effects, and makeup, you're telling me they didn't have enough money to have John say goodbye to Ghost? And the episode ends right there. No real cliffhanger, just a bunch of unanswered questions questions and more unsatisfactory character arc deaths than actual deaths. Now, forgive me because I'm writing this at 2 a.m. in the morning, but are we not going to revisit Alaria Sand? Is this actually how Jamie is going to bow out? My main gripe is not that many of these characters died in a stupid way, but they did so without achieving a satisfying emotional arc, whether that arc be tragic or redemptive. Now, maybe Jamie and Cersei aren't dead and they'll come back hiding under the skull of that dead dragon, but the damage is already done. Now, I hung on this show even until this last episode, but I can't any longer. We'll always have the journey, I guess. But what do you guys think? Is this still the greatest TV show of all time, or have things taken a turn for the worse? I bet I'm going to get a lot of hate for this video, so I'd appreciate a like if you could swing it my way. And you can chew me out on Twitter at ThinkStoryYT. Until next time, remember, Daddy loves you very much. 